This was originally going to be a head-to-head -head lecture of ranula versus ectopic mucosal, but as I was putting it together, I realized that my teaching file had a lot of lesions that mimic ranula, so now it's a whole lecture. The take-home point of this lecture is not every cystic mass in the submandibular space is a ranula. Well, what is a ranula? A ranula is what happens when the sublingual gland is replaced not just nearby, but replaced by a cyst. The gland itself should be gone. It may be entirely within the sublingual space, in which case we call it a simple ranula, or it may plunge, dive, into the submandibular space, in which case it's called a plunging or diving ranula. I happen to prefer the term plunging ranula, but diving ranula is a synonym. This is an example of a simple ranula. There is a cystic mass right about where you'd expect the sublingual gland to be. It's elongated along the inner surface of the mandible, right? It's ex more expanded than a, the gland would be, but it's right where you'd expect it to be. There is some dilatation of the intraglandular segments of Wharton's duct too. So where do ranulas come from? Well, here is an image from the same individual six months earlier. And you can see, of course, that there are multiple stones along the course of Wharton's duct. So ranules arise when you get inflammation, scarring, chronic obstruction. But unfortunately, sometimes there is no known predisposing factor uh, when these arise. In contrast to the simple ranula, this is a plunging ranula. The majority of this mass is in the submandibular space, right? Here it is right near the submandibular gland. But importantly, there is a component of this lesion that extends up into the sublingual space. Or maybe we should say that this part is extending down from the sublingual space, because this is really where it started. Here is the normal sublingual gland. You can see that it is completely replaced by the cystic mass on this side. And there's a little neck where the lesion extends through the mylohyoid muscle. This is the boutonniere deformity in the, uh, the mylohyoid muscle itself. Like any cystic mass, ranulas can become infected. And when they do, they look ugly. Look how heterogeneous, there's thick uh, areas of septation down the center of it, a thick rind of enhancement. This looks really, really ugly. The clue that you're dealing with an infection is all the inflammation and cellulitis elsewhere in the neck, but it really has a horrible appearance. Once again, though, you've got to find the communication up into the sublingual space, and there might be a little bit of residual gland, but most of the sublingual gland is replaced by this cystic mass. That's how you know that you're dealing with a ranula, an infected plunging ranula. Let's take a moment to discuss some of the terminology that we're using here and throughout this lecture. A mucosal is used in two different ways. It's a fully obstructed air cell, bony air cell, that is filled with mucus and it is under pressure and therefore the air cell starts to remodel. We also use mucosal for any pseudocyst that is filled with mucus. So what's a sialocele? Well, a sialocele is a mucosal that has arisen from a salivary gland. It contains saliva and it contains mucus. A ranula is a sialocele that is associated specifically with the sublingual gland and has completely replaced the gland. So a ranula is a type of sialocele, which is a type of mucosele. All right. So if a ranula is a type of mucosele, then any mucosele in the submandibular triangle must be a plunging ranula, right? Not exactly. Here is a cystic mass in the submandibular triangle. This is a mucosele histopathologically, but there is no communication up into the floor of mouth. There is an intact mylohyoid muscle. This mass is exclusively below the mylohyoid, exclusively in the neck, not in the floor of mouth, right? So this didn't arise from the sublingual gland, so it's not a ranula. This is a sialocele that has arisen from 
other salivary tissue. It's not connected to the sublingual gland or the submandibular gland, so it has presumably arisen from ectopic salivary tissue that exists along the line between the submandibular gland and the sublingual gland. You can see salivary tissue there normally, and you can form mucoceles from that. Okay, here is a cystic mass that really is right where you'd expect that sublingual gland to be, right? It is right alongside the inner surface of the mandible. But there's a couple things that differentiate this from the ranulus that I've been showing. One is that there is nothing, no tissue between the cyst and the bone. It is right up against the bone. That hasn't been true to this point. But even more importantly, here is the sublingual gland being displaced away from the bone, away from the mandible by this mass. This is something that has arisen off of the mandible itself. And if you've been looking carefully, you've seen all of the infiltration in the subcutaneous fat. This is an infection. This is a, a dental abscess, right? A dental abscess in the floor of mouth, displacing, not replacing the sublingual gland. Okay, surely this one meets all of the criteria for a plunging ranula. Here's the cystic mass in the submandibular triangle. And if we look up into the floor of mouth, we can see dilated uh, sublandibular ducts, uh, Wharton's ducts. So here we have something in the floor of mouth. Here we have something down in the submandibular triangle, plunging ranula. Well, be careful. You can see that there is still a sublingual gland here. That's your clue that this is not a ranula. It hasn't replaced the sublingual gland. And it turns out that there is additionally a large mass that is in the anterior floor of mouth, aggressive squamous cell carcinoma of the anterior floor of mouth. That accounts for the obstruction of both of those submandibular ducts. And this is a metastatic lymph node with central necrosis. So cystic lymph node in the submandibular triangle, not a plunging ranula. The key there was A, this big mass, and B, the preservation of the sublingual gland. Okay, a quick trip over to MRI. So here is a, a cystic mass Com almost completely filling the submandibular triangle, sort of surrounding the sublingual gland there. And you can see that it is extending up into the floor of mouth. It is sitting right along the inside of the mandible, about where you'd expect the sublingual gland to be. So you got a big cystic mass in the submandibular triangle communicating up into the sublingual space. Why isn't this a ranula? Once again, look for the sublingual gland. Here it is on the contralateral side. Here it is on the affected side. That's the sublingual gland. And in fact, even the myelohyoid muscle has been displaced away by this infiltrative mass. As you might have guessed, if you noticed how infiltrative this is, little tendrils of the of the abnormality extending into surrounding uh, planes. That's pretty characteristic of venal lymphatic malformations. So this is a lymphatic malformation of the submandibular space. Preservation of that gland critical for this. It's not arising off of the sublingual gland. All right, how about this low density object right here. It's coming right through a deformity in the mylohyoid muscle. Surely this is plunging down from above. Well, it is plunging down from above, but it's not a ranula. This, compare the density of this tissue to the density of the other glandular tissue. It is the same type of tissue, right? It's got the same characteristics to it. This is actual salivary tissue, not a mucosal. And yes, it is extending from the floor of mouth, right where you'd expect the sublingual gland to be, down into the uh, submandibular triangle. It is going right through that boutonniere defect in the Myelohyoid muscle, just like a plunging ranula does, but this is not a cyst, this is salivary tissue. This is normal ectopic salivary tissue between the submandibular gland and the sublingual gland. It is much more evident on the right side than on the left side here. Uh, this is just normal asymmetry.
right? This is normal salivary tissue in a ectopic location through that boudinier deformity, but it's not a cyst, therefore it's not a ranula. But don't get cocky about that. Here's a very similar case. This is soft tissue again, looks a lot in character like the um, like the submandibular gland, right? But this is mucoepidermoid carcinoma arising from the sublingual gland and extending down through the boutonniere defect in the mylohyoid muscle. These do look a lot alike, but this is actually an abnormal gland. Compared to its counterpart, it's inflamed. Um, it, it's obstructed by this tumor. Uh, but not everything that extends along this line between the sublingual gland and the submandibular gland is normal salivary tissue. Sometimes tumors do that too, so be careful before you blow these things off. That's mucoepidermoid carcinoma of the sublingual gland. Okay, for sure, this tumor is going to meet all of our criteria for a ranula. There is a large cystic component in the submandibular triangle. There is continuous extension up into the floor of mouth, right? Here is the sublingual gland on the other side. I don't see anything like that on this side. It's separated from the mandible by a small amount of tissue. Everything that we looked for in a ranula is here. Why is this not a plunging ranula? First, let's take a measurement. Is this really water? Well, if I measure the Hounsfield units on this one, I get negative two. Negative two Hounsfield units. That's not water. Shouldn't be below zero. Here's another thing to look at. If you take one more cut up above this mass, there's the sublingual gland. It's not replaced. It's just displaced superiorly by this mass. It's still there, just not on the same cut that its counterpart is on. So it's not replacing the sublingual gland. It's got a density that is less than water. So what's a cystic neck mass with sub-zero Hounfield units? It's a dermoid cyst. This is a path-proven dermoid cyst. Maybe you could have clued in by noticing that it had sort of a thick rind of soft tissue around the outside. Maybe you could have noticed that's a little darker than most of the cysts I've been showing you. Um, tough case, right? Some subtle differences. But again, finding that sublingual gland, even though it's been displaced, finding that gland is a huge clue. Well, that's a lot of different things that look like plunging ranulas, but aren't plunging ranulas. So be careful before you throw out that diagnosis. It's a fun diagnosis to make, but there are pitfalls that you really want to avoid.